Hey, welcome to another edition of Rowlett's Freedom Run Maintenance Day. Maintenance Day, what we're going to do today is we're going to change the oil. This oil here can last up to 15,000 miles. I don't usually run it 15,000 total miles, but I will run it, uh, you know, 10,000 or so miles. And then I also use the Mobile One Synthetic Extended Performance Filter. I got the drain plug out the oil filter out what I like to do is before I put it this filter on I like to give it some put some oil in it I learned this from my dad of course and then I take a finger whoa it just got sunny out here it's getting kind of warm here in Oklahoma we're in Oklahoma at my parents house and uh, just parked here and so I thought I'd take the time to do some maintenance. So I just rub the oil onto the actual gasket. And that way it gets a good seal and then when you start the motor up you put, you've got oil in the filter already so it's not a dry start. You saw me take it off with the filter ranch. They say that you shouldn't tighten it with the filter ranch because you of course want it to come off when you're done and it kind of does suction up into there anyhow you don't you want it good and snug because of course it's got a lot of pressure there and you don't want to blow it out either so a good hand tightening is really all it needs and that's what i got is a good old hand tightening so now you just put the plug back in right here not very difficult just got to think at an rv store they're going to charge you a lot of money for this so it's a pretty simple uh, it's a pretty simple deal to do yourself if you if you have the right tools of course and the right space and time to do it you know so you can save yourself quite a bit of money things good and snug of course come back and check afterwards for oil leaks but we're good right now one of the things that I use is I try to use a this is what I use to catch it and my thankfully for me my dad has a bin that holds oil so I just pour this oil in there and he can uh, take it out or reuse it however he wants to do it it'll look pretty good so we did the draining part now comes the filling part <laughs> see owner's manual but it's pretty self-explanatory I like to use one of these square filters and I'd like to I always try to make sure that they're completely clean and uh, the reason I like the square ones is especially in these motor homes it's hard to get uh, oil up here in a certain way and uh, I learned that the hard way if you want to spill oil this motor takes somewhere between six and a half and seven uh, quarts of oil so this is a five quart gallon holder and uh and that that way i can get the bulk of it out and then i can check it and then see how much exactly it needs after that I'll be careful not to fill it too fast and now i'm gonna let that drain there a little bit before I check it. Make sure it gets all the way to the pan to the dipstick. While I'm doing that, I'll 
I have a little bit of a controversial subject that people have. They're going to ask me, why as many miles and as full time that we are, uh, as most of you know, we travel all over this country. Uh, we do music all over this country. And, and uh, so a lot of people, are, you know, think we should have a diesel. And we went ahead and chose the gas. And, you know, I, truth be known, if I had the money that I really want, you know, if I really had the level of money that, that I would like, then I would, and money didn't matter to me, then I would probably buy a, a diesel. Because it's on a different chassis, it's a, it's built for over the road. It's built from going from one town to the next town to the next town. And uh, I don't buy into the whole gas uh, fuel savings. Um, the the problem with the fuel savings is the the amount of mile per gallon of fuel that you might save with diesel you lose because it's about 20 cents or more per gallon more expensive uh, for diesel so that's not a thing the only thing about a diesel over uh, over a gas is that it's built for it it's built for over the road it's built it's got a tougher chassis the motor is built to go five, six, seven hundred thousand miles. Actually, they call it a million mile coach. And that's, that is possible if you take care of them, but most of the time everything else breaks down before that ever happens. So, um, the issue that I have with diesel is this is a perfect example of why I chose gas. Because you can't, it's harder to do your own oil changes. Everything costs money. A diesel, even just the fact that a diesel mechanic gets paid so much more than a gas mechanic, um, everything on a diesel is more expensive. Uh, a friend of mine, he blew he uh, he blew out his radiator on his bus, his diesel bus, and literally they were going to charge him eight thousand dollars to replace the radiator in it. He did it himself. And did it for about three or four thousand. That's still crazy amount of money. And I can go somewhere and probably find this in a junkyard somewhere. Um, I can work on it. Uh, I understand it. Uh, so the maintenance on it is so much cheaper. Even just filters. Filters. If you do a full maintenance oil change, filter change on a diesel, it could literally cost you five or six hundred dollars. Um, this one, you know, everything is going to cost me, uh, at, a, at a regular store, is going to cost me maybe $100. There's a lot of differing opinions out there, and I get it. And uh, trust me, uh, if money wasn't an issue, I probably would still buy a diesel because it's built for it. So um, they say that this motor is one of the strongest motors on the workhorse chassis, 8.1 liter um, Vortec V8, and it's... I love it. It cruises down the highway at about 2,200 miles, uh, 2,200 RPM at about 65 miles per hour. I love it. It's it's just the torque in it. The it's it's my favorite vehicle I've ever owned. It's a Newmar. Um, we have a Newmar Mountain Air, and it's just I love it. It's just incredible. But uh, but someday we can also hope that we can get into. A really nice uh, possible King Air or London Air new bar. But uh, right now, we're grateful for this one. Okay, so the oil's hit the bottom of the pan, so we're going to check it make, before I put any more oil in it. I just want to check it and make sure how much is in there. We're right at the first dot, which definitely means it can take one more quart. Possibly two, but I'm just gonna put one more cord in it. And that's it right now. Before I put this up, I like to clean it all out and get it all clean for next time. What I take is the rag that I'm using, stick it down in the hole and turn it. That keeps that part all to clean. Perfect middle of the stick. Exactly where I want to be. One thing that you don't want to do, I don't know that many people, I, I'm sure a lot of people know this, but it might be a newbie, is you don't want to overfill 
oil. Well, that's going to do it. I hope you were entertained, if nothing else, by my video today. And just change the oil on this beautiful Newmar Motorhome 8.1 liter Chevrolet. Uh, I love this coach and I'm grateful for it, so I'm going to take care of it. And remember, as I close up the hood on this bad boy, that uh, I'm sitting here at my mother and father's place in Oklahoma, and uh, his words are yelling at me right now saying, clean up your tools when you're done. Ha, ha, ha.